Good morning, folks. We begin with the flash you saw bottom right. This was a plasma filament, a relatively small one, erupting from the surface when the magnetic forces holding it in place destabilized and sent the plasma racing away from the sun in a cloud of charged particles called a CME. Because of the size and position of the filament near the departing limb, the blast is not aimed at Earth and will almost certainly not be geo-effective. The Enlil spiral appears to confirm this. This was the top eruption on the Earth-facing disk of the last day, and it registered only C3. Meanwhile, solar wind appears to have even more dense peaks in the late evening hours, accompanied by a peak in the solar wind speed. Now, while this hasn't produced much geomagnetic instability, the low-energy protons are surging quite evidently, and the magnetometers are detecting the change in heliospheric pressure. Sunspots are remaining at very low numbers here. Lone Incomer down south has some size, but no negative spots to mix with. He's just sort of moseying in by himself. Other than the filament, our top watch on the sun is those dark coronal holes, also the proliferators of the earthquake watches. The top quake of the day was almost assuredly an earth spot rumble as Vong Fong is at Japan's doorstep along with another low to the northeast and where the 6.3 struck just off the Japanese coastline is right where Vong Fong will exit the territory. Typhoon conditions are starting today. Meanwhile, the cyclone continues to approach India. This one is gaining strength very quickly and is going to smack the subcontinent directly. The Atlantic Ocean system was also named as expected. Tropical Storm Fay should not be an issue for the mainland U.S. as it is hooking north into nowhere. Interesting note from Rutgers, the September snow cover was the highest in the northern hemisphere of the globe since the 1970s. And as if that isn't enough of a wow, when you isolate just North America, it is the largest snow cover for any September on record. Riddle me that. This was the scene two days ago as flooding from storm remnants caused a bit of havoc in Arizona, but it was nothing compared to what happened in Italy. Multiple inches fell in a record time flooding streets, sweeping cars down the road and on top of each other, and even creating sinkholes. Pretty rough day. Also getting word that at least 19 people are dead in a terrible landslide in western China. So you see that about three weeks past equinox here, the temperatures are balanced north and south. Let's check out the polar vortices. Back in August, the winter strength persisted down south, but as we move into their spring, the vortex has split and will begin to fade. Meanwhile, the summer vortex is always weak. This is August up north, but we're building back as we approach wintertime. More on this and other vital topics can be found in the valuable info playlist linked right below the video. Anyway, the central convergence in the U.S. has produced significant storms since it formed. You can see that the convergence is still there but moving quickly, so please check your local forecast along this line tonight or if you're anywhere east of it. In Europe, we not only have the northern lows driving moisture along their southern edge, but the Mediterranean got five on it as well, tossing in some heat. Strongest cloud formation and storms will come right in the middle again tonight. Scattered rain all over down under, but the top watch is this convergence just west of New Zealand going to be heading atop land today. Strongest storms on the planet shown in purple and red here on the pressure overlay to the earth wind map. Mobile Observatory is in Baltimore, Maryland today at the Science Center. Details at the website observatoryproject.com. We got shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.